Now I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Tony Mijanit, aka Spaghetti Coder. And please, why Spaghetti Coder? Is it like your code is, uh, is long and crazy like spaghetti or you love <laughs> spaghetti and code or <laughs> what is it? Well, I studied computer scientist and one teacher uh, told me that my code looked like spaghetti code. So okay. I used <laughs> that alias name <laughs> to remember that. <laughs> Uh, perfect. Very nice. <laughs> That's great. Um, Tony is from Mallorca in Spain, uh, where he is also based. Probably one of the most beautiful islands uh, in the Mediterranean. I'm super envious <laughs> <laughs> that you are there. <coughs> He's a creative coder, generative designer and experimental animator, also a visual and computational artist. Um, his background is in computer science multimedia production and creation, and he also holds a PhD in computer graphics on the internet. But actually, you don't really spend all of your time on front of the screen. You, you love to hike, no? You love to hike. I mean, yeah. Mallorca is very hilly. Um, and you also kayak around uh, the island. So I'm sure you get to see all beautiful little bays that um, you can't access otherwise. So that, that yes. must be very wonderful. We are very, we, are very we are very lucky because in a small island, we have mountains, we have mm, yes. uh, beach, we have <laughs> the sea. So You have it all, like yeah. <laughs> Even snow. Did you have snow this this year, this summer? Well, it's it's a real, uh, it's a rare. Uh, sometimes right. there are uh, two, three, five days with uh, with the snow on the top of the mountains, but very rare. Yeah, because th this winter there was this crazy uh, kind of blizzard across uh, across uh, Spain. So mm -hmm. yeah, so di it didn't didn't hit you that much. That's no, good. no, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But you, you also have a small garden, you grow vegetables and, and fruit. So is that something you've done um, or well you started with the pandemic now as so many other people or is that a passion from before? No, uh, normally people here in Mallorca, we have a small farm or a small right. uh, field and we uh, grow up our vegetables, uh, our fruit. So we, we, we are lucky for that. Yeah, that's great, great. Uh, well, you have the sunshine, so yeah. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, um, Tony will play uh, your, your video and um, where he'll give us a little bit of uh, insight in the Gene Typer project. You've um, seen already some of his work and after <coughs> this, uh, we'll have a break where we play the reel again. And um, please, um, again, try and, and, and catch up with him on the chat, um, post your questions. We'll be back with Tony for a thank you and a couple of questions in a few minutes. All right, let's play the video. Hello, my name is Tony Mijanit, also known as Spaghetti Coder. I am a creative coder, generative designer and experimental animator working on computational design and abstract animation since 210. I'm very happy to be here at the TypeTech Meetup. First of all, thanks to the organization for inviting me to take part in this amazing event in the world of typography. I'm not a typographer, but I love it. I'm just going to explain a little bit about the personal project I started in 2018 and I titled the Genotypo. It stands for Generative Typographies. It basically consists of a collection of experimental generative typographies created through creative coding and computational creativity. Generative typography refers to any typography that in whole or in part has been created with the use of a self-governed or an autonomous system. The aim of the project was to explore different computational algorithms and apply them to a concrete concept or area. 
I'm familiar with design and animation, so I decided to exit from my comfort zone and move fearless to the world of typography. Over these two years, I explored and implemented different algorithms to automatically, with no human intervention, design, mutate, animate, and sometimes even destroy a typeface. The first step of the system is to extract a collection of points from the bounds or from the field of the text symbol. After that, I use them to create some kind of magic. Throughout the project, I've sometimes used geometry and maths, other natural concepts such as gravity, attraction, or repulsion forces, other physics or chemical simulations, randomness or chance, and many others. The initial conditions I set at the beginning of the project were that typographies should have these features. Parameterized typography refers to the fact that some external values, options, or typeface properties can be set or updated at any time of the generative process. Transitional typography is when changes over time in the size, weight, orientation, and position of the type can be used in order to enhance the expressiveness of the typographic message. Data-driven typography is about involving data, such as text, audio, image, or video, from different sources such as files, websites, social networks, or APIs, in different parts of the creative process. Virtual typography is about producing sensible solutions for conveying text messages gradually and effectively within media environments. Virtual typography is time and rhythm bound. Interactive typography is about designing real-time typographies through the user interaction on a reactive system using any device such as a mouse, keyboard, microphone or web camera. I could classify all generated typography so far in five main categories. Typographies based on autonomous agents let me explore concepts such as vector fields, path, target and separation behaviors, connections, randomness, noise, Brownian motion, pain effects, and so on. Typographies based on physics let me look into concepts such as particle systems and springs, reaction diffusion, attraction and repulsion forces, diffusion limited aggregation, magnetic fields, fluid simulations, and many others. Typographies based on geometry let me go through geometric operations, different kinds of triangularization, like the Lanois and Voronoi, polygon intersection, fractals and recursion, inverse kinematic, circle packing, a very long list. Typographies based on chance, let me experiment for example with interpolation, noise, randomness, probability distributions and conditionality. Typographies based on motion, let me examine trigonometric functions, oscillation, 2D and 3D transformations such as translation, rotation and scale, pixel displacement, glitch, cutout, optical effects, kinetics, and many others. Recently, I am trying to move the project from digital to physical, so now I am producing typographies using plotter, robots, 3D printers, or just tinkering with electronic circuits. Such a vast territory to explore with generative typographies. So that's all about my Genotypo project. It is still a work in progress with more than 100 typos created so far. I create new genotypes regularly, document the projects on the website, and share results on social networks. Hope you like it. If you have any questions, I'll be around for a while, or you can reach me on social networks if you prefer. I'll be happy to share any thoughts or ideas about generative typography. And again, thanks to all the people from TypeTech Meetup for making this event and talks possible. I wish TTM a long life. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Tony. That's uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Thank you. Uh, um, I have uh, one question. <coughs> uh, mm -hmm. Have you explored the kind of connection to variable fonts technology? So is there perhaps a way 
uh, you know, for your algorithm reacting to, to variable uh, parameters? Mm -hmm. N not yet. It's a pending task, so uh, a new thing to explore. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Um, okay, there is one question. Uh, what software do you use uh, processing? Do you have a code somewhere? Uh, yes, I normally use Java, the programming language, and mm -hmm. I use the processing library to draw the graphics. And I have a GitHub account where I share some code there. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. That's great. So people can, can play around mm -hmm. with, with your code extend, extended. Do you collaborate with uh, other coders as well on, on this project or? Well, at the beginning, it was a personal project, but uh, in I normally use some code that uh, I use it for Genetypo project with other projects and uh, I use with other coders, yeah. Okay. And uh, actually, you're these 3D um, objects and and even um, uh, you, you saw, you, sorry, you showed some kind of posters what, what's the plan yeah. with those? I mean, I would love well, to have one of these, you know, just hanging in, in my studio. Yes, look, I have some of them here. Uh, oops, I can see there. Ah, yeah. so okay. I, I've printed some of them and uh, people can uh, shop if they want. I have okay. some of them here. This is one of them, yeah. Great. And I also print uh, some uh, 3D experiments with uh, the new typos with the 3D printer. So right, uh, right. I have some of them, okay? So okay. in my right. website, people can shop if they want uh, and uh, support my project. So they can uh, sh uh, shop some, these kind of posters and if they want have a, one at home, I'm, I, will, I will be very happy. Wonderful. Can we also um, ask for, you know, like kind of a special request if we yeah, find right. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. I'll, I'll get back to that to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tony. We'll uh, see you at the panel in a little while. Okay. See you All later. Right. Mm -hmm.